Howdy fellow Model Railroaders, my name is Kevin Brown and I want to thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. As you can see we have a different venue today. I want to introduce my good friend Dave Gentry and he's going to show us around his layout, the Cache Valley in Northern, uh, which is an end scale layout which is right over there. Uh, but I thought we'd talk about it a little bit first. Uh, so Dave, uh, what about your layout? Um, well first welcome to everybody yeah. to the Cache Valley in Northern. Uh, I began this railroad back in 1973. It was a, a project to uh, take my hands and mind off of all of the work I was doing in graduate school <laughs> and, and give me something creative to, uh, to come with and uh, kind of break up my constant studying. So uh, it's, it's got a long history. Uh, it started as a four by eight a very simple Atlas uh, design. From there, uh, we ended up uh, losing that to a nursery, and so <laughs> it moved into a, a be another bedroom where it was a shelf layout, just a simple four foot by six foot shelf layout. Uh, from there, we moved again, and uh, it became a 10 foot by 10 foot room uh, dedicated to the layout. So I, I remember that, first, that's the first that time I saw it. Yeah. Our first house here uh, yeah. in Normal, and then uh, we moved to here in 94, so this um, specific uh, railroad uh, began with parts of the earlier one, but really in 1994. So what you're seeing is a 25-year uh, uh, accumulation of progress, I guess. Hmm. What made you choose the name Cache Valley in Northern? Um, I fell in love on a, on a trip out west, I fell in love with uh, Cache Valley in northern Utah. It's just northeast of Salt Lake City. Logan is the center of the valley. Uh, I thought it would be a great idea for a railroad. So um, the Cache Valley in northern, in theory, is a north-south bridge line that would run northern Utah into southern Idaho. And so uh, I love mountains, I love mountain railroading. And this gave me an opportunity to, uh, to explore that and give that some, uh, some uh, chance to, to live here in my basement. That's cool. Well, tell you what, uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, take a look at his layout now. I think you're going to be very impressed. Well, let's go to the railroad. <laughs> First part to show of your layout is the uh, duck under bridges that you have, and I think you've got a unique design for doing that. So if you want to go through that, if you would. Well, one of the things I wanted to avoid in uh, in doing this around the wall was a duck under a place where uh, I was constantly having to go in and out by getting down and underneath it. The bridge, uh, lower bridge, is set at the main height, which is about 42 inches off the ground. Um, I gave it the the good old warning stripes and the plastic uh, plexiglass fall preventers. And so it's, it's shielded that way. I use turnbuckles to pull it in. And when we do take it out, the whole bridge comes out, by the way. When you take the bridge out, then you will see that the, uh, the sides open just a little bit. So there's a little bit of give in the layout. Upper level, uh, I started with the uh, warning stripes as well. And after several bonks in the face, I realized I needed more padding. So I uh, put a little padding up here. It acts as a protector to keep trains from falling off. So it kind of serves double duty, but it allows me to get back and forth across there. And when I'm not running trains and I just want to move freely, both bridges come out and they've got hooks underneath to hang on the layout. That's pretty cool. As I recall, you're both sides kind of float a bit, so when you tighten this up, it really does snug up the track. Right, and it, it eliminates the rail gaps uh, by pulling it tight and works fairly well for getting trains across. Way cool. Uh, I, next, I think we're going to spend a little time looking at his unique helix. He has a pyramidal helix, and we're going to take a look right now. See you in a sec. And here we have a look at his pyramidal helix, and I'll let Dave explain what, what exactly that means. Uh, this is a variation on the original. Uh, it was designed uh, in N-Scale magazine. One of the very early issues of N-Scale, I saw it and thought that this would be a great way to allow for scenery and incorporate the helix to get a double deck layout. So it gets tighter as it goes up, the radius decreases, but the grade also decreases so that the pull, the drag on the train stays fairly constant and doesn't increase as that radius comes down. As I recall, its big advantage is it's cut out of a single piece of plywood rather than having to piece together all those half circles that most uh, 
uh, helixes have. So that's a distinct advantage, and it only crosses over itself once, right? Right, and to get in and to get out is yeah. the only time. Uh, actually, it, and you take a saber saw and just let it run on a rope as it winds itself around a dowel in the center, and you end up with a slinky type rope. Yeah, kind of peeling an orange out. or something, yeah. So, uh, as you see it, the one thing that did change, I had problems with kinks in the track because it's a constant circle. So I made the change, I cut it in half. That must have been fun. <laughs> oh, yes. And I stretched it 16 inches. And so it is now a uh, not a, a pure helix. And it's not a, 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 it's more a, a series circle, of, of but uh, it's ovals. ovals yeah. A series of ovals that feed on each other. And uh, it also allowed me to can come in here uh, to work on the bridge work and come up with something that I had and bridges. All of my expansion joints are on the straight. It allowed me to solder all of the curves to have non-kinked mm -hmm. corners. So it's worked out really well. Out of curiosity, what's your separation? How, how high does that helix uh, climb about? Well, to get from the lower level to the upper, uh, it's actually, and, and this is the base level right here. So it's one, two, three, four, five loops to get around. And that's going to raise it about 14 inches. Hmm. That's cool. That's quite a separation. Way cool. We're going to start our tour at the uh, main yard facility on Dave's lower level. And as you can see, he's got a roundhouse and turntable. And there's our train. And uh, I wanted to point out his uh, Cash Valley Northern has its own paint scheme, which he's been using. You've been using this for a long time. I have. Yes. So we'll go. The uh, the roundhouse, uh, in my idea, is a throwback. Uh, it would have been there. They inherited it earlier, a railroad or whatever, um, from the steam era, and just didn't have enough to tear it down and get rid of it. So they made it useful. And uh, since it's a small line and it's a bridge line, uh, it's a, one good place on the line to take care of repairs and maintenance the yard is small but it's got an engine servicing facility what uh approximately what area do you try and model uh i i'm really more of a modern op operator i like more modern equipment so as a secondary bridge line you're going to see a lot of sd 40-2s a lot of sd 45s and a conglomerate of other locomotives from as a uh, a secondary line would pick up on the used locomotive market so not a lot of uh, first generation uh, or, or new, excuse me, new generation locomotives on the line. And I got a comment. You you do a wonderful job with structures and that whole line there, which is the train has to pass behind. That's really, really impressive. That's one area that I tend to focus on because it is so right in front of everybody and guests to the layout tend to see that very quickly. Is Many that... of the buildings are detailed on the inside and each one has its own little story. So I would call mostly revolving around grandkids, right? Right. Mostly <laughs> around granddaughters and uh, their interests, but also some others that uh, relate back to my own personal interest or uh, family friends. So you're seeing the train now leave town and head out into the country. Uh, it'll climb this grade. Uh, one of the things I wanted to be able to do with the layout was to have good sections of train running through scenery. Uh, there on the left side is a, a small buffalo herd that it's going past. Oh yeah. Yeah, your ratio of uh, scenery to track is very pleasing. Typical of the Cache Valley, some fruit production. So I've got a, uh, a refrigeration plant there and packing plant. Looks like Next an interchange to it, too. Across the interchange and the, uh, the brown structure is Perkins Chemical, named after a good friend of mine. The small little uh, Schmidt woodworking at the very end of the line here. Uh, also a, uh, 
a good friend who was very much into woodworking. And we head across the face of the helix. And at this point, it's, it does not go up. It continues on around. So this turnout leads into the helix. If it takes the right side, it's going uphill then. As you can see now, it's headed back around toward the yard. And this is where it would divert. The track way in the back, just barely visible, is uh, another route down off of the helix. So as I recall, your helix is a giant re reverse loop. Yes, it is. And so that creates a few electrical issues, but uh, hopefully they uh, won't be too difficult to work out as I uh, move forward with the layout. It's a nice view of your fleet of locomotives. And your engine facility. Here we are in the top of the, at the top level, and we're panning around. So this is the exit uh, from the helix, and it's going to go across a little gulch here. With the that is uh, all stick made, so the handmade little trestle that uh, covers the gap. That's gorgeous. And heads toward the mine district. Uh, what would a mountain railroad be without some kind of mining? Uh, I see you've got CVNN coal cars too. I have, uh, they have some cars of their own. So uh, a combination of public service company uh, uh, decals that I had and Cache Valley and Northern. Uh, Way cool. And we'll oh, pick up a train there in the... Uh, the passing siding, right? Yep. All right, let's take a look over there. So the trains come past the uh, mine. It's working its way through a cut. And this is an abandoned uh, rail line that it's passing. I had some ideas about an expansion and uh, decided not to go that way. So it comes through and it'll head out onto the upper bridge. Across Little Ranch in the back is a, another one of my granddaughter's favorites. Her love of horses. I can tell she's been here whenever my horses are moved. <laughs> Again, through another cut and another passing siding. I have two passing sidings on the upper level that allow me to go either clockwise or counterclockwise around the upper level. And then across the scenery, where Observers get to see the train up close and personal. And then it heads into the uh, pulpwood uh, transfer point. And heads out across uh, the river and back to the helix. One of the most recent scenes that I just completed is the pulpwood facility. Um, it's been laid out on here for a long time. I just finally got around to the detailing. The uh, burner that you see, the slash burner, is scratch built. And one that just was made up with some uh, aluminum sheeting. The building is a wood kit, laser cut, and acts as an office for the area. GHQ materials. And the logs that you see the, in the cars are actually pieces of uh, dwarf lilac that have great uh, visual impact because of the way the bark on them is. So I will have that industry on the upper level that I can switch in and out of. Mm -hmm. From there, you head off again back toward the helix by going across the river. And let's take a closer look at that river scene. That's really slight, very nice. To fulfill my mountain railroading uh, desire here, uh, cross the river and into another cut uh, allows me to cause the train to appear and disappear as it moves around uh, past a little lake, a little pond, and then around the cut 
and this then comes back into the helix. Um, this will be a, a future project as I decide how I'm going to get um, across into the helix from this side. Finally, the last thing, we'll pull out a steam engine here as you'll hear it start out. And uh, the improvement in in-scale steam over what uh, there was 20 years ago uh, has really caused me to take a little more interest in some of the steam possibilities, primarily running on our uh, club here in Bloomington Normal, N-scale of Bloomington Normal. Uh, we're a modular club with both N-track and T-track. And so as the steam engine pulls out and uh, passes the uh, station, um, it, I would say that where I'm going from here, a lot of the buildings are detailed on the inside. You're going to see more of that. I'd like to have all of my structures fully detailed inside and out. Uh, there's some scenery. Obviously, you saw some pink foam in the back and a couple of sky boards that are not in place. And so uh, a lot of detailing and scenery yet to be finished up on the layout. Uh, plus the uh, T-Trek modules. They're easy to make. They can be focused on a theme and easy to transport to train shows around the area. So, you know I'm addicted to that. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of the uh, the future here. A lot, like I said, a lot of detailing. I really enjoy the detailing and that's where a lot of my time will be spent. Catch your steam engine coming around. And I gotta say thank you very much for sharing your layout, Dave. You, you've put a lot of work into this in the last 20 some years, isn't it? Wow. Very impressive. And I want to thank you for sharing it with our viewers. And uh, uh, as always, if there's uh, if you guys like what you've seen, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you very much for watching. And thank you today for, for showing his stuff off. Glad you were all here.